Welcome to this installment of Zoom with COA. Five days in May, Arab-led pogroms in Israel's mixed cities, <clears throat> featuring the chairwoman of My Israel, Sarah Haetzi Cohen, and Ayelet Ken Wadler, courageous resident from Lod, with an introduction by ZOA National President Mort Klein, and the Q&A will be moderated by ZOA's Israel representative, Dan Alouz. I'm Alan Jay. I'm the National Director of Outreach and Engagement here at ZOA. I'd like to welcome you all, let everybody know that we at COA are still hoping and praying that everyone on this call are and remain safe as hopefully this pandemic begins to come to a close. All microphones should remain muted for the duration of the program. There will be Q&A later moderated by Dan Luz. All questions must be submitted in the Zoom Q&A chat feature found in the middle bottom of your screen. Just a <coughs> caution, we will not be moderating the Zoom chat, so please do use the Q&A. Most on this call already know ZOA's history. Founded at the first Zionist conference in Basel, Switzerland in 1897 with the express mission of supporting the creation of a Jewish homeland. Nearly 125 years later, we find ourselves still fighting for the Jewish state of Israel's sovereign rights, and we've added to our mission the noble fight against all forms of anti-Semitism. With Iran nearing nuclear weapons capability, the UN funding its latest anti-Semitic action, a commission of inquiry directed against Israel. With attacks on Jews in New York City, Muncie, Jersey City, Poway, and most recently in Colleysville, Texas. With heinous anti-Semitic activity at USC, Temple University, Duke, and North Carolina, to name a few. Our work at ZOA has never been more important. I hope you will consider generously supporting ZOA. After the webinar, please go to zoa.org, click the donate button and help fund our work. Morton Klein is the child of Holocaust survivors born in a displaced persons camp in Gunzburg, Germany. Mort has an impressive bio. He's worked in three US administrations as a senior economist, and he worked very closely with two-time Nobel laureate Lioness Pollan. But I would argue that Mort's greatest accomplishments have come as the national president of ZOA these past 25 plus years. Mort goes where other Jewish leaders will not, fearlessly defending Israel's sovereign rights as a Jewish state, including the entirety of her capital, Jerusalem, and all of Judea and Samaria. Mort courageously and unapologetically fights anti-Semitism, whether in the current administration, in Congress, at the <laughs> UN, or on college campuses. Mort can always be heard, read, or seen on major media outlets. Mort has testified before the US Congress, and Mort speaks directly to major US and Israeli lawmakers and political leaders. Mort has had more of an impact than he's comfortable acknowledging. Most recently under Mort's leadership, ZOA has figured prominently in getting the US Embassy in Israel moved to Jerusalem, <coughs> in putting a stop to the insanity of opening an Arab consulate in Jerusalem, and in securing sanctions against both UNC and Duke University for repeated anti-Semitic activities. There is much, much, much more, but we need to get to our program. I'm honored to work with one of the greatest scientists of our time, to introduce the program today, National President of ZOA, Mort Klein. Well, Alan, uh, thank you so much <laughs> for that overly generous uh, introduction. And thank you, uh, Dana Luz, for helping set up this uh, meeting, to, this very important meeting today <clears throat> on a topic that most people, and not even most Jews, are really aware of. <laughs> uh, we have with us a distinguished representative of Israel, Sarah Haetzni Cohen, who's not only a columnist for Israel Hayom, that's the most widely read paper in Israel, but is also the head of My Israel, which is a Zionist movement <clears throat> promoting true Zionism, ZOA type Zionism, telling the truth of the Arab Islamic war against Israel and the truth of uh, Jewish rights in the Holy Land of Israel. Uh, she was born in Kiryat Arba, a uh, sacred city next to the first capital of Israel, Hebron. Uh, she's been an officer in the IDF. She was uh, involved with the serious science movement, Beitar. She has uh, graduate degrees from Hebrew University in public policy. And uh, during, during these Israeli-Arab 
pogrom attacks against the, the Jew, uh, uh, Jewish citizens of Israel, <laughs> she was on the ground helping the Jewish families uh, to try and protect them from these horrible Israeli Arab uh, pogroms. <laughs> so she's not only in the front line of the Israeli Arab uh, Islamic, uh, the Arab Islamic war against Israel, also the Israeli Arab Islamic war against the citizens of Israel. It is really frightening to think that we Jews have endured pogroms throughout the world. And now we come to our own holy, sovereign Jewish state of Israel and to have endured now pogroms from Israeli Arab citizens, vicious, unprovoked uh, pogroms purely based on hatred and wanting the Jews to leave our own holy land. Um, I might add, uh, people may not know this, the ADL, the Conservative Reform Movement, uh, National Council of Jewish Women, only yesterday sent a letter to Bennett complaining bitterly about Israeli terrorists who attack Arabs. None of us support uh, inappropriate wrong attacks against Arabs, but they wrote this about Israelis calling them terrorists, but they've never written to Bennett or Gantz about the Israeli Arab citizens who have attacked Jews, unprovoked, completely unprovoked. So we're really ashamed of our colleagues uh, in those organizations. They should be speaking out about this issue. And also I might add, she won one of Israel's most distinguished honors, the Irving and Cherna Moskowitz Prize for promoting Zionism and helping secure Israel. Uh, Irving uh, and, uh, and now Cherna is a board member of the Zionist Organization of America. Uh, their uh, generosity saved ZOA back in 1994. Without them, ZOA wouldn't exist anymore. So we're so uh, especially honored that our guest has received the Irving and Cherna Moskowitz uh, Distinguished Award for Zionism. And she'll be introducing a very uh, brave resident of Lod, uh, Ayelet Chen Wadler. Sarah, I, I may, one other thing, Sarah Etzny, Cohen's grandfather, is a friend of mine, Al Yakim Hatzmi, one of the great Zionist, courageous Zionists, and great columnists in Israel. So it's a special honor to uh, introduce Sarah Etzny Cohen. Sarah? Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, you forgot the most important thing that I'm, I'm a mother of, of four children. Uh, <laughs> but uh, thank you for uh, representing me, uh, for pre presenting me, sorry. And um, thank you for, for inviting us for this very, very important, um, uh, I don't know, the stage or, or thank you for, for giving us the opportunity to give you some information or to tell a story that, that happened here in May that not, not many people are aware of. Um, so thank you for coming. Hello, for, good evening from Jerusalem, first of all. Uh, thank you for coming and thank you for your time and thank you for your careness. Um, thank you, Dan Iluz, the ZOA representative in Israel. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm, I'm a bit, uh, it's, it's not a COVID. Um, thank you for this uh, initiative, for, for this collabor collaborative uh, initiative. And, and thank you, Mort, for this, uh, for, for this, for having us. Uh, as, uh, as you said, my name is Sarah Etni Cohen, and I'm, uh, besides all the, all the things you said, uh, I'm uh, the head of my Israel organization, and uh, I would like to, to give you a few, uh, a few details about uh, my Israel, because it's, it, it's, a most, it's a mostly Israeli movement. We're an Israeli um, Hebrew-speaking organization. We do some Hasbara, but, but most of our, of our activities are right here in Israel. Uh, and we think that the Israeli public is, is very important. Uh, and you need to make Hasbara also for Israelis. And uh, we, we, we are covering this field. So um, and I'm happy that that my Israel is, is one of the one of Israel's m largest uh, grassroots organization. We're dedicated to promoting Zionist activism online and on the ground. The, mo the movement was uh, founded by two uh, famous people, uh, Naftali Bennett and Ayala Chaked, back in uh, 2010 before they went into politics and we don't have any political affiliation as, as a, an organization. 
Um, we, what we do uh, on a daily basis, we drive change by empowering more than 200,000 followers that we have on, on social media, emails, uh, etc., to take action, to defend Israel, counter BDS and, and uh, strengthen Jewish communities all around Israel, especially in Judea and Samaria. And since May, uh, in new fields that we we never knew that we need to strengthen the communities in in you know in the mixed cities and actually all around Israel. Now this evening or this afternoon was born when I uh, I spoke with Dan about another event that we're we're holding together uh, about Judea and Samaria. We did one last year and here is uh, here is the commercial for for the ne for next month. We're going to hold another uh, another a uh, three events about Judea and Samaria. Uh, and in, when Dan called me, I told him, listen, why don't we do another event about what happened here in May? So because something happened here and we need to talk about it. We need to speak about it. We need to tell the story. We can't, you know, just continue as, as nothing happened. And this is how it was born. Um, because my, my professional life, but also my personal life changed this past May. and from a lot of people's point in Israel, but also out of Israel, May in, in May was one main event and it's the war with Hamas. Uh, the Garden of, of the World uh, operation, in Hebrew it's Shomer HaChomot, uh, the missiles that were shot uh, uh, all around Israel. Um, during a week, more than a week, Israel was under attack um, from uh, of a missile attack from uh, Hamas in, in Gaza. Uh, they, they, they hit all around Israel, uh, especially in the south. Ashkelon really was a war zone. Be'er Sheva, Sderot, Ashdod were, were war zones, war cities during this time. But this, the main story of Shomer uh, Homot, of this operation, uh, from my point of view, but also not only Sarah's point of view, but also a lot of Israelis, it's it's not the it's not the the, the main story. It's not the missiles from Gaza, because we already it's sad to say it, but we already got used to it. You know that every couple of years, every few years, we have a war with Gaza. Um, so what was different in this past uh, uh, operation? What 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 happened here that was such an earthquake? Um, the story of May 2021 is, is what happened here in, in Little Israel, in the cities, in, in the roads, main roads, in um, little towns, in the Galilee, in the Negev. And this is what this event, this, uh, uh, this, you know, this meeting is about. Um, this operation of Shomer Chomot, it started with the missiles uh, to Jerusalem. I, you know, I took my kids and we hid in, 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 people that live in Jerusalem. We, we have, you know, we have a lot of troubles. But what, what we don't have is this, this concern about missiles. Because usually Hamas shoots over when, when they want, you know, to, threat, to threaten the, the Israelis. They shoot Tel Aviv. But then they decided to shoot Jerusalem. Um, so they shoot rockets over Jerusalem. It was a uh, May 10th, uh, and this it, it didn't come out of the blue. Uh, it was it was one of the the climax of of a very violent um, month in Jerusalem. It was the Ramadan uh, um, during this 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 whole month month uh, it was the Ramadan, uh, and every day on a daily basis. There were uh, violent uh, um, incidents in Jerusalem, especially in Jerusalem, in Damascus Gate, in, in the Temple Mount, in Sheikh Jarrah, um, and also in other places in Jerusalem. We, we called it the TikTok Intifada because you know it, it was like a, it, it was like a circle. So they put it on, on TikTok, and then and then it was like the, the coolest thing was to hit Jews. Um, especially Haredim, extra ultra orthodox, because they have the, the you know the Jewish look uh, in the in the light train in in, uh, in Jerusalem. So it was a very tense uh, month, and suddenly in in um, it was Monday, Monday afternoon, May tenth, it, it just blown up uh, uh, totally when Hamas intervened and and shoot missiles over the capital of Israel. 
uh, very symbolic. They, they didn't do it again during this operation. Um, but they said they said we we are fight, like this was their their you know their statement. We're fighting for Jerusalem. Um, we're not just fighting Israel. We're going to to free Jerusalem. Uh, so in this evening, accept missiles. Uh, it started in Jerusalem, but but you know the, it, it 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 came really really fast to um, most of Israel. Um, so accept accept the missiles was a very violent uh, evening all around Israel. What we called mixed cities, Ramle, Lod, Yafo, Akko, uh, was a new center of violence. We didn't see it before, not in 2014. Uh, and not in any other, you know, war with Gaza, we didn't see the the violence in inside Israel. Um, from you know, it came from the, the Israeli Arabs uh, towards the uh, Jews. So um, in in Yafo, Akko, Ram, Lelod, um, the, a, a volcano of Arab violent uh, violence uh, erupted. Uh, as I said before, it came from. Um, from the Arabs towards Jews community, uh, Jew Jewish people and Jewish property. Um, what we saw is a violent mass rioting. Uh, and on, on one hand, you know, a lot of uh, thousands of, of Arabs in the streets uh, uh, called Khyber, Khyber al Yahud, like, you know, uh, take all the Jews uh, out or, um, and and uh, burned everything, and and uh, you know threw stones and and all all all, all these uh, uh, beautiful things. And on the other hand, so so you would expect the the police, you know, the police to protect um, who were attacked, um, who have been uh, attacked, and and the police were not function, uh, and the police didn't function, and. What what we thought is only a one evening, um, you know, um, mistake of the police that they, they didn't have enough policemen or or uh, whatever. Uh, we we got to this point that we understood that it's not only a mistake. It's not only a one evening incident that the police couldn't um, couldn't manage. Um, it happened also in in the Galilee, also in the Negev. Um, you know, uh, uh, they they burned uh, they burned electricity in the Negev. Um, they they blocked um, roads, main roads, uh, or the, really a, a whole mess. So a few a few uh, um, data, a, a bit data to to understand this this uh, this uh, big uh, event that we had in Akko, for example. Most of the violence was was inside the, the old city. You know, it, it was the center of the violence. The policemen did not go into the city in, into the old city because they said, the, you know, they just blocked the the streets, but they, they didn't rescue whoever needed to be rescued inside the old city. So um, dozens of Jewish shops and businesses were were looted and broken. Uh, hotels were set on fire. One one person, 84 years old, Avi Har Evan, he he didn't make it. He didn't make it to, to escape from the hotel that he were he was uh, staying with his wife, and he was burned to death. Um, also, in in the Akos street, they they hunted Jews. Uh, they made uh, three lynch in Jews in men. Three men, uh, uh, Jewish men, were were, were the victims. Uh, Three of them got injured very, uh, you know, severely injured. Um, in Lod, half of the, the city was, was uh, set on fire. Um, you're you're going to hear it from Ayelet Khan, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to elaborate on this. But what happened in Lod, um, it, it started with, with mass um, violent riots. They they aimed it to in to, to Jews to police in, in the first night, um, and it included um, setting fire on on uh, s sorry setting a, a synagogues on fire, uh, setting Jewish you know uh, cars that were belonged to Jews recognized as belonging to Jews on fire, uh, apartments uh, one one uh, person. Was was uh, killed was was murdered. Eagle Yoshua and and the others will will speak about it. 
Um, and what happened in Lod, another thing that is very important to understand is, is uh, shooting. So if in Akko we saw only like uh, setting on fire and, and you know, and lynch with, with you know, like, like we saw in, in, in the first Intifada, they used rocks and Molotov cocktails and, and uh, all these things. But in what happened in Lod was severe because of the shooting. Um, so there were dozens of shooting and illegal weapon that they held by, by Arabs in Lod. So what we, we got, we arrived into Lod on Thursday. The whole mess was started on Wednesday and we arrived on, on Thursday. From Wednesday, sorry, from Monday, on Monday and we arrived on, on um, Thursday. From Monday to Thursday, we were, what we did is to try and wake up the police. So we yelled through the, our keyboards, actually. We pressured and we put, you know, all the, all the videos and we, we put pressure on, on uh, the Minister of in Internal Security and everyone we could. On Wednesday evening, Wednesday night, we understood that it doesn't matter how, 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 um, how much we're gonna, sh you know, we're gonna um, shout. It's not gonna help because there's nobody, you know, nobody's in, nobody's in the house. You, you, nobody will, will, nobody's there to hear what we have to say, what, what we're screaming. Uh, so we decided to come physically to Lod to assist the local residents uh, that uh, were under attack. And we uh, conducted a, a situation room together. Uh, it was on a, inside a youth club. Uh, we recruited um, help from grassroots uh, support. We called volunteers to come to Lod. We said, no police, please come. Uh, we asked people with licensed weapons uh, to come. We, we asked medics to come. We, we uh, asked people who have drones to come. We um, we con we founded uh, we, we founded a uh, call center calling center. We asked the Yesha consul to send us a bus with the with the armored glass because they were shooting in the in the streets. So we we wanted to send volunteers to protect apartments, for example. That we had to ride somehow into into this uh, very uh, uh, attacked uh, uh, neighborhood. So we asked the, the Yesha Council to, to help us with the bus. Um, and with all this, we, we protected the city. We're, we replaced the police, unfortunately. I'm saying it's really with, with, a great, uh, 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 with great sadness because I don't think it's my, my um, job to do it. I'm a great believer in, in the state of Israel. So we protected the, the, the residents and the houses and synagogues, community centers, every, everywhere they needed us, we were there and we were working together. We worked in coordination with the police, but the police did not help almost anything. So it was completely a civil protection. Um, the change came on Friday's evening when the police, uh, uh, they, they, they got uh, special forces, finally. So once we saw the police is in, we just, you know, we took back. We, we, we're, not, uh, we're not happy to replace the police. And we, we went uh, back home. We stayed, you know, we, we stayed in the city uh, in more soft um, uh, aspects as uh, assistance to elderly population or any volunteers they needed. Um, after everything ended, all this mess, um, we understood we have another job. And the job uh, is to, to tell the story, to, to tell this story everywhere we can. So we uh, made this, uh, this uh, video five days in May. We added a, uh, English subtitles later on. And we are acting, we're there in everywhere we can in order to raise the awareness of what happened here in May, but all, not only about what happened, but also we always think about the, the future because we have a new challenge. We have a new danger here in Israel that we didn't think before. We didn't see it before. We didn't want to think about it before. And we believe that the state of Israel needs to, take, to, to be very 
to, to be very uh, anxious about it. Uh, and us as, as, you know, as a movement, as a Zionist movement that really believe in this um, Zionist, uh, Zionist state, we, we took this job of raising the awareness and telling the story everywhere we can. So really, I, I'm, I'm, thank you uh, very much for having us. And I want to ask Ayelet, Ayelet Chen, Val, sorry, Walder, uh, to share with us her story. Uh, I just, uh, you need to understand that the, the residents of Lod are really brave. I mean, the, the people who stayed there and saw everything. And thank you for, for your time and thank you for your uh, courage to, to come and, and talk to us. Thank you very much, Sana. So uh, I'm going to share, I made a small presentation, which I hope will help us in better see, just give you the grasp of what is happening. Can you see the screen? Because I can't see you. Okay, so my name is Ayla Tren Wadler. I grew up in a small settlement in uh, the Judea Sand uh, Desert. I'm a physicist, I'm married to Dani, I'm a mother of six, and I work at Israel Aerospace Industries. All this bioinformation leading us to the main topic we're here today. I'm a resident of Lod since 2006. And growing all my life around Jerusalem, um, when we had to move to um, for, for work, uh, to move to the center of Israel. We were looking for a place to move, and we found Lod, which is an amazing place, and we'll talk about it soon. Why is it so amazing? Uh, what, 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 why I think it's so amazing. Um, and we came here now just to understand. This is Israel, the scene from, the, from space. And you can see the light of the Gush Dan area, the greater Tel Aviv area. And you can see um, the Jerusalem uh, center light. And right in the middle, the outskirts of Tel Aviv is Lod. Uh, just to get feeling of scale, this is the greater New York City area. This is the same scale. So Lod is a very, very small speck in the map of Israel. It's, and it's important to understand how big it is because uh, to understand the geography and the demography, and that's why I'm starting with this before, because that has an effect of what happened here. Okay, so Lod is about three miles over four mi miles across, which means if you want to take a brisk walk of an hour or so, you go from one end of it to the other. So everything that happens in one corner of the city very easily spills to the rest of the city. Lod is one of the oldest uh, populated cities in the Middle East. Um, if you ever come and visit, and I urge you to because it's an amazing city, you'll be able to visit the uh, mosaic uh, museum. You can see the big, uh, the big uh, mosaic here, which is one of the nicest ones found in Israel. Just about 25 years ago, we traveled all over the world, including the Louvre and so on, and just landed in the new museum about eight months ago. Uh, I won't go through all the details of everything that you can find in Lod, but you can find many great things. The one point I do want to um, show you is this place. This place that you can see in the picture here is called the Triangle, uh, the Triangle of Peace. You see, this is a mosque, the big mosque in Lod. Right behind it, you'll see the um, St. George a church. And right here, which you can't see in the picture, there's a, there's a shul. And we used to say this is the best place to, to see how everybody lives together. Because it's one place and we have all the religions uh, in one single place. This is in the neighborhood Ramatish called in Lod. We'll go play, back to this place later on. Uh, who lives in Lod? According to uh, 2019 population survey. About 70% of Lod population is Jews, 30% uh, is Muslim, with a bit of Christian, Arabs, and other mixed in the middle. From that population, 30% are no immigrants coming to Lod in the past 30 years. That flood of immigrants 
um, has changed um, the demographic status of Lod. That joined with uh, new cities built around Shohan and Modi'in, which made a lot of people who could leave Lod live Lod. On the other hand, um, about 80% of the Arab population in Lod also came in in the past about 20 years. There are Bedouins and collaborators um, that moved in, and most of the um, original population of Arabs in Lod, uh, the testament won't mix with them. And these are the biggest um, troublemakers in Lod in the past uh, years. This is us. This is my family, me, my husband, and our six kids. We've been living here, as I said, for 15 years. Four of my kids are uh, original Ludaim, were born in Lod. And why did we come here? We came to Lod, first of all, because we wanted a place that me as a physicist, my husband is an engineer, could live and find a job easily. Jerusalem wasn't, when we moved in, wasn't so into that um, professional field, wasn't so much available there. And I know people in the States are used to driving two hours, three hours to work, but in Israel, if you drive an hour to work, that's considered to be a lot. So, so uh, I yell at Finn just one more time, please, if you could speak yes. just a little bit louder. We're getting people asking for I'm sorry. Okay. Thank uh, you. That so is better. Of, so first of all, it was location. Second, Lod, as we you just we just saw before, is a very it has a variety of people living in it, and me especially growing up in a very small settlement, I wanted I wanted it different from my kids. I didn't want it to be the same. It was very affordable. The community life here is amazing which is part of the what enabled us, everything Sarah described before, the, the standing up part of it is the amazing community we have here. And we really, really like the fact that by coming here versus a lot of people moving out, we we're making a difference. Because just by moving in here, we made a bit of a difference in, in the fabric the, our community, not just us personally, of course, uh, one person can do so much, but in the fabric of um, of city life, and that helps move the city forward. So the, all this is up until now. And then Guardian of the Walls Operation came. Um, that night, May 10th, um, my eldest daughter was in Yerushalayim, was uh, Jerusalem Day, and there's a flag parade in Jerusalem every Jerusalem Day, and she went there. And we're starting to hear that as uh, they're walking and they're walking the, 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 um, in the parade, uh, we're starting to hear that there are um, rockets fired at Jerusalem, which was extremely unlikely. And that's, again, what Sarah said before. That never happened before. And on one hand, I was terrified to see what's going on with her. And is she okay? Because if you walk in the street and there's a missile coming at you, there's very little you can do. And on the other hand, we're starting to hear uh, demonstrations uh, in a neighboring neighborhood to ours that were starting to get um, more and more... Um, loud and violent. Um, it wasn't straight outside of my house, but as I said, everything is very close in here. So I want to show you just a small, like one minute clip of what happened then. <laughs> Um, 
I'm sorry, it's just, watching this is not that easy every time. Uh, here we see. That, that is the first, uh, the first riot at May 10th evening that started. You saw beforehand hundreds of people walking in the streets. Um, and they, they tore down the Israeli flag and replaced it with a PLO flag. And they started walking around, um, kicking and destroying everything they could find. Um, burning garbage cans, burning cars, uh, trying to burn shuls. And the demonstration spilled over. Uh, this started in the big mosque, as we said before, in the um, Triangle of Peace. The demonstration started, uh, the riots, it's not a demonstration. <laughs> it started at the Triangle of Peace and then spilled over to other neighborhoods. Now, Lod, unlike most um, mixed cities in Israel, there are some Arabs neighborhoods and some Jewish neighborhoods, but a lot of mixed neighborhoods. This specific picture is from a mixed, mixed neighborhood called Ramat Eshkol, where people live in the same building, Jews and Arabs, like apartment A is Jewish, apartment B is Arab, and so on. And the Jewish people in that neighborhood um, were terrified. Well, not obviously terrified, but I want you to imagine for a minute that you're sitting in your apartment and you hear what the, the screaming and the uh, shouts, Allah Akbar, the Chayba Chayba Al Yehud, uh, which is a reference to a massacre of Jews. Um, you hear it from outside your window. You hear your neighbor, which just two days ago you exchanges ple you exchange pleasantries with her about her daughter's wedding. You hear her saying, "This is a Jewish car. Burn the Jewish car, the Jews' car." And then, as you sit there in your apartment and you're afraid to leave because there are hundreds of people in the street, the siren for the missile attack starts because we're still in the guardian of walls. Now what you're supposed to do in old neighborhoods when the sirens start is go down to outside of your apartment, to the hallway, to the staircase, because that's the strongest place in the building, that's the safest place to be. And you're in your apartment and you have to choose, am I risking my life from getting hit, hit by a missile or Am I risking my life with the rioters outside who were just shouting to kill the Jews? And that was the experience of being in the neighborhood that night and the following night. And those um, fires that started in Ramatish Kol spilled to other neighborhoods around Lod, to the synagogue that was uh, torched that night, and as you saw before, a lot of cars. And in the worst feeling of this was the feeling of hopelessness. Nobody's coming to help us, and what can we do? The first night was like. But somebody has to come. The, somebody has to come. The police, the army, somebody. And um, we kept calling the police. And either they were stretched thin, because as Sarah said, the riots and everything was all over Israel and originated in Jerusalem, which was packed with police at that time. So I don't know. I'm not doing where, where the police could have been but they did not come to us. And the first night passed and the first 24 hours passed and the police just wasn't there, just did not show up. And after the first 24 hours, the, um, this was the case. There was terrible wreckage and burns in 
the mixed neighborhoods in Lod. Musa Kassona, who's an Arab rioter, was killed during stone and Molotov throwing. Igal Yoshua was lynched and murdered on his way home from work. The pre-army prep school was burned. School, you see the picture on the left. This is what kids' school looked like. They piled up books, and I have to say some, book, some pictures there I did not put because somehow burned books and burned chumashim um, and Torah books hurt me much more to see than burned cars, and I just couldn't put it there. Um, this is what the streets look like. Uh, this here is, again, the triangle of peace, and here's the mask on the side. Hope you see my pointer. Sorry. Um, hope you see my pointer. And we said, okay, so the first night was terrible. The next night will be better because now the police know that something is happening and they'll be ready. And then Musa Hasuna's funeral started and everything just continued the same way and even worse. And now neighborhoods that were solely Jewish were um, in attacked and people were trying to break into them. And everything just kept on escalating. So we started to understand that we're standing there alone and we have to do something to be able to to be able to, <laughs> to survive. So we called out for help. We called out everybody and everybody we knew. Messages ran through social networks and WhatsApp groups. And once Israel Shili started spreading the news also, and we started preparing. We had a lot of volunteers coming over. We took out all the Torah uh, from the shuls that have been attacked and put them for safekeeping. The operation room was established and we started dealing with the next few days. And we had volunteers from all over Israel coming. Over a thousand volunteers came just to do whatever needed to be done. So you can see they slept wherever they could and worked in whatever they did. Because one amazing thing that happened here is no matter what happened, we immediately started fixing it. Remember in June, I, I took people walking around and in the neighborhood and everything looked so normal because we just fixed everything, everything really, really quick. What you can see here is happening still as the riots. Daytime, we're fixing. Nighttime, they're burning. And that continued for five days. Uh, in the following days, we saw looted apartments. So they broke into the wall next to the apartment, broke into the apartment and looted and burnt it. The Mosaic Museum was ransacked. The New City Hall was ransacked. The police post was burned. More synagogues was destroyed. And any place we did not have volunteers, any apartment that the volunteers didn't stay in, because a lot of people were afraid to stay in Lod. They were afraid for their lives. And so volunteers came. Um, some of them armed, some of them just a bunch of six or seven guys just to sit in apartments because every apartment that was left empty was looted and destroyed. And this all went all through Friday. And you won't remember the date, but um, two days after Shabbat was um, Shavuot. So we had two days that were like extra sensitive. Um, Friday afternoon, everything started slowly to come down. Um, but that, for example, that Shabbat we had, we went, which never happens, we went to show with phones on. So in case there's an emergency, in case there's any problem, we can be reached and do whatever needs to be done. Um, it was crazy. It was, um, I have to say that up until 
I, I mean, I, I spoke about it a lot in the past eight months, um, but I never edited a, a presentation like this. And up until now, I didn't realize how, oh, no, takes me back. Um, the app, the, the amazing thing is that all through this, if there's one thing we felt constantly is the hug from Am Israel. We had support coming from Israel and from abroad, but that was uh, somewhat later. People were sending everything from cakes to food, to activity things for kids who were staying at their home to do. And that just kept on saying, what can we do? What can we do? Opening the house saying, anybody who wants to come and stay, um, uh, come and stay, come get away. It's funny because we used to say in Lod, okay, everybody who wants to come to go away from the southern border, to be away from the rockets, missile can come and stay in Lod. And suddenly we got the, the opposite invitations to come and stay in the Golan, come and stay in the uh, southern uh, borders, come come away. We got the most wonderful hug of Ad Israel. And it's amazing to know what, well, the power of this nation is. It's amazing. Uh, in numbers, if we'll sum up, we had one Jew murdered in Lod, in Israel, sadly, there were more. Six Jewish apartments were torched and vandalized. Twelve wounded were from gunshots, from stabbing, from stone falling, which is not at least lethal than stabbing. Eight synagogues were torched, vandalized. Fifty events were reported of live gunshots. I can tell you that ever since then, we had a lot more uh, in that. Over 150 stoning events, 300 destroyed or burnt cars, and over 1,200 volunteers from all over the country coming to us. We keep on building. We keep on fixing. We're hopeful. It's not the same as it was. Beforehand, we were, well, the, the attitudes vary between people who says, um, um, that you can live, to what extent, to say, okay, we can live in a mixed city, to what extent is that mixed, and how can you do that? The attitude varies, uh, but we're hopeful that we can at least um, achieve some way of, um, even if not mixing really together, just living side by side, one way or another. I think this picture represents the best of what we are now. We're here, we're strong. We have the Israeli flag and we walk with it in Lod, but we need the forces to protect us. Uh, preferably <laughs> the army and the police, but if they won't do their job, we'll do whatever it is and we're still here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ayelet Khen. Wow, this was really a powerful story. Uh, thank you very much, first of all, for your courage uh, and also for telling us your story. Thank you, Sarah, also uh, for everything uh, you've done in Lod and for bringing this story uh, in Israel and also outside of Israel now. Uh, my name is Danny Luz. I'm, uh, I'm ZOA's Israel representative and I'll be moderating the Q&A. Uh, as you can see, the hour is almost over, so we might be going a little bit over the hour. Uh, depends on how many questions there are. Uh, I'd be honored to ask uh, ZOA's national president, Mort Morten Klein, uh, if you would like to ask the first question. Yes, thank you. That was a devastating report. We in America don't understand <clears throat> why does no one know this? among the American Jewish community. We're not aware of this. Why hasn't the prime minister made some major speeches about this? And two, why is it that the police weren't there? What is the reason? I don't understand this. And three, why has there been any action by the Knesset 
to have serious laws about terrorists, Israeli terrorists, to deport them, to have very strong laws against Knesset members who praise Hamas should be deported and removed from the Knesset. And why aren't there stronger laws? Is there any move for stronger laws <clears throat> that if you commit as an Israeli citizen, a terrorist act against Jews, you'll be deported. They should know they're risking their ability to stay in Israel if they do these things. So those are my three questions. Why does no one know this? Why no police? Is the Knesset doing anything about deporting terrorists and having stronger laws against Knesset members who are anti-Israel and against Israeli Arab citizens who are terrorists? Thank you. Ayelet Khan, I suggest that you start by answering and then if Sarah wants to add something, then she'll be able to do so. Well, I have to say that most of the question is more uh, about my pay grade because I don't deal with a lot of um, politics. I don't know why the police couldn't, didn't come. I, I think it's a bit of a mystery. Um, I want to say again that it was stretched thin, but I know that even in cases where they were police in the street, they wouldn't come to stop uh, an actual act of violence on the spot. And the only way to make them come was um, sort of bring the action to them. I, I wish I had an answer. And that's the scariest thing, because as I said before, we've had a lot of gunshots here in the past eight months. It's not like it feels that, it feels like there's a blanket covering stuff. There's the, the Nothing is really burning, but the ashes are still there and they can ignite at any moment. And we all feel like it's it's just a matter of time till every, the, the, the mountain will erupt again. And telling the story as much as we can is the best way I have is to, to maybe maybe make people more prepared for next time. Sarah, do you want to add something? I see that a lot of questions are are, uh, are asking, you know, about the police. So I don't have an answer. I mean, I asked the same thing, you know, when when I was sitting in my my safe house, uh, in my safe home, and and um, and it screaming and yelling through my keyboard that the, the police to come, uh, I asked the same thing. And the moment I understood, we understood that that nobody's home. Um, we, we got out, you know, out of my, our comfort zone and we came down to, to assist the, the, uh, local residents. And if I had the opportunity, if I had, you know, more, uh, more Sarah's or more Israel or more Gavin that helped a lot. So we, we, if you're asking me, they needed us in Akko as well, not, you know, as much as they needed us in Lod. They needed us in, in Akko and we couldn't, we couldn't make it. We didn't know on, on live what's happening um, because Akko is, you know, is far away. Uh, and, uh, you know, when you're in Lod, so Lod is close to everywhere in Israel. It's 20, 20 uh, uh, kilometer from, from Natbag, from, from Ben Gurion or, or even less. And uh, sorry, even less uh, 20 minutes, I wanted to say, I had it, don't laugh at me. Uh, and uh, in, in, it's in the center. So, so the, the media was there in Aqua, they, they weren't there. So we didn't know what's happening. And I asked the same questions about the police. And ever since May, uh, what we do in, in our organization, our movement is to try and wake up uh, everyone and wake up the police. And we don't want, the, there's an illusion here in Israel that, you know, it was a volcano that erupted and now it's, it's, it's quiet. But the, the, the thing is that this is what the, they want to believe. And we're here, you know, to be this, this little kid that say, no, it's, it, you, you can't go to sleep now. You, you can't fall asleep. We have to get ready for, for next time. Um, so I don't know what happened to the police. I just know that that they had, it's, it's not only about um, lack of, of people, lack of policemen, it's also about their orders they're getting from, from the top. Okay, so for example, on, on Thursday, when we came into Lod, there were tons of policemen 
tons of police women and they all they did is to stand they stood still and they didn't run after like we we told them listen they're shooting from this and this window please run run into this house and just you know do something do your job protect the people protect the city and they didn't do it because they had wrong uh orders and there's a wrong perception of what the job of the police what's their main job um and we're working on on changing it thank you sarah uh i uh, see that there's a lot of questions that uh, relate to uh, the police as you said but not if, before i get to the to the next question i just want to say that sarah and her organization my israel really did a wonderful documentary, which is in Hebrew, uh, but it has uh, English subtitles, which I'm posting right now in the chat. Everyone probably got the link right now in the chat. It's on YouTube, uh, so you can uh, you can look at it. My next question is: a lot of the questions are asking uh, what has been done since, both when it comes to arresting people who rioted and also in preparing for the next riots. As you said, there's a sentiment in Israel that this was a one-time thing, but still. Uh, is there something that's being done in order to be better prepared next time? You want to answer? Again, my here we're trying as much as we can to um, follow everything we have, um, meaning we have a diary of every event that's happening here, and we report it to the police and make sure it gets reported because a lot of people get um, after being ignored by the police a lot of time just give up and don't report so make sure everything is being reported we thankfully have a new uh, chief of police here in Lod who is doing a much better job and every uh, publicity and every tweet and every post that's been written helps to push it forward to the right place, but it's not a lot issue. It's a nationwide issue because this happens in, in the Negev, in the Galil, happens everywhere. And even when people get, when rioters and murderers get arrested, they tend to get, not get prosecuted or not, or even if prosecuted, not get the proper punishment to deter the next time. So as much as um, everything we can do is pushing more and more and trying to push more and more in terms of knowledge and information and spreading what it really is, because that helps change the, the, the conception. And sometimes that helps change what actually happens. Um, I, I'll answer this as well, uh, if I may. If I may. Um, we unfortunately we don't see um, that you know the system, uh, the judicial system, the um, the police um, already like they finish their jobs uh, in collecting all the information and arresting whoever they need to arrest. Uh, some of them they could recognize. Some of them you know they, they were the corona. Uh, the COVID uh, mask, so so they couldn't recognize them. Uh, it, and you have to understand there were thousands of people on the streets. I mean, it's very hard. And they broke all the cameras. And the first thing they did, uh, except, you know, replacing the, the flag of uh, the, the Israeli flag with the PLO flag, is to break all the cameras. So it's very hard. It's a big challenge. But the police, you know, they ended their job. Now it's we we unfortunately we don't see that the, the judicial system is uh, relating these events as you know as as severely as they need to as we think it's as, is is a, they need to to uh, relate them uh, and we are keep on pushing you know our 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 strength is is on new media. Uh, so we keep on pushing and we keep on raising this uh, this issue and uh, we're not going to stop. Uh, I'll ask one more question. I know there's a lot of questions in the chat, but uh, I'll ask one more question. One for Sarah and then one for Ayelet Khen. Uh, Sarah, a question from Steven Gertzoff. 
Uh, do you think that this was coordinated, possibly pre-planned action by the local Hamas supporters? Do, how do you see Hamas's involvement in these riots? Um, so, so that's a great question. I th uh, the question. I, I think that you know it's like a, it's like a snowball. So, so, so it, it's not. Well, it, it was not. They didn't plan it um, in advance as as a big thing as we saw it as it erupted. But I do th do think that they will use the same uh, operation plan as it worked now. Um, they will use the same operation plan in next times. And you can see, you know, that, that when they talk about, they try, they keep on trying all the time. Uh, and they have all the new media um, uh, uh, channels like TikTok, like uh, Instagram, I, nobody stops them. I don't know if you can stop it. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's a big thing. Um, but what I do know that we need to rethink, I mean, we can't think about, uh, about the, the future, uh, how we thought about the, uh, about the past. We need to understand that something happened here in May and to get ready to, to this to happen again. Thank you. And Ayelet Khan, maybe you can describe how uh, Lod looks uh, nowadays. Uh, and especially when it comes to your relationships uh, with your Arab neighbors. Um, cool detachment, I guess. Just if you can uh, put the microphone Sorry. once again. Yes, Thank yes, you. yes. Uh, cool detachment, I guess. I mean, we both live here. Most of, <laughs> um, most of the Arabs in, in my specific neighborhoods, most of the Arabs are... Um, weren't the main force of rioters. I know, but for well, a fact, I, I have a friend who teaches in a mixed school and she had students and teachers post during, the, during those five days, post encouraging messages to uh, the rioters and, and so on. Um, I think there's a big difference between a mob and people and we were facing a lot of a mob and on day-to-day -day life, we're dealing with people. So I can, when I deal with a person, it doesn't really matter what Jewish or Arab or whatever it is. So whatever, I can stand in, in line in the supermarket or whatever it is with him, but um, dealing with a mob and dealing with like a general, in, the general um, out, outbreak, that, that is the issue. So day-to-day -day life is, is tense. And um, <laughs> I think most people try to separate as much as beforehand would go and buy in any store, whether it was owned by Arabs or not owned by Arabs. Now, if I know a, a, st uh, um, a store owner is a supporter of the riots, I won't go in there, never. I won't buy anything there. Um, you decide day by day. It's not always the same thing. Thank you so much uh, again for telling us your story. I know there was a lot of questions and so I'm putting right now in the chat my email. Uh, if people feel that their questions weren't answered, feel free to email me and I'll get the questions to Ayelet Khen and to Sarah. I'm sure they'll be happy to answer you by writing. Uh, before we close the event, I want to ask once again ZOA National President Morten Klein if you would like to make closing remarks. <laughs> well, thank you for making us aware that Israel not only has security challenges by enemies outside of Israel, we now know that Israeli Arab citizens of Israel within Israel it's also a security problem that Israel is going to have to deal with. <laughs> I also want everyone to inform everyone that tonight at 7.30, JBS TV will host our gala from December, where Mike Pompeo, the Prime Minister of Israel, and Dr. Miri Adelson will be speaking uh, about Israel and U.S.-Israel relations. And if I may indulge, the one important question that was not asked, <laughs> why do you think this happened now? What provoked it happening now that it hasn't happened for decades? Was it that you have an Arab uh, 
uh, anti-Israel Arab entity in the government? Were there other no, reasons it was, why? It was before now? that. Pardon? It, it was in May, the before, before this government was formed. Oh, before the government. So why, what, why do you think this happened now? What, what, were the, what, what, what is the basis of this, these horrible attacks by Arab, Israeli Arabs on their Jewish fellow citizens? Was there something that provoked this that you didn't see this before? Um, I think that uh, I don't know. Uh, that's 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 the the fair the, the fair the fair answer. Uh, but I do think that you know it, it's a lot of uh, there's a lot of incitement in in the new media, uh, Hamas and not only Hamas, also uh, um, you know uh, from Iran and in uh, different places are are keep on they keep on uh, doing it. Uh, there was a lot of tense uh, around Jerusalem in this Ramadan, and Jerusalem is all, always a very sensitive uh, point, a very sensitive uh, issue in this conflict. Um, and we, I think that Israel is, you know, we, we can have a great uh, F-35 airplanes, or but we need to be strong. It's It's not only about our great weapon we have, but we also need to be strong um, in every everything. Um, so I don't have a, a very good answer for this, uh, but these are my assumptions. Well, thank so, you. Go ahead. So thank you very much, uh, Sarah and Ayelet Khen. I think that everyone leaves this webinar, uh, first of all, in shock and uh, sadness on one hand on what happened, but also inspired by the courage that you both uh, showed in these events. Uh, we have a lot of events uh, coming up in ZOA uh, that I would like to announce before we close this event. Tomorrow night, uh, we have a ZOA book club, tomorrow, sorry, uh, afternoon. It's night in Israel, but it's afternoon for you at 1 p.m. Eastern time. We have a ZOA book club meeting uh, of Homeland from Clandestine Immigration to Israeli Independence by Dr. Mordechai Cohen, featuring Israel Cohen, the son of the author. Uh, it will be moderated by, by Liz Burney, the ZOA uh, Director of uh, Research and Special Projects, again, Wednesday, January 26th at 1 p.m., that's tomorrow. And also, I'm very happy to announce that ZOA, together with the Yesha Council, the Judean Samaria Council, and My Israel, which, again, Sarah, who spoke today, is the chairman of, uh, will be uh, hosting the second annual Judean Samaria virtual mega event. Uh, some of the confirmed speakers include former mayor of Jerusalem, Nir Barkat, mm -hmm. head of Jer uh, regional councils mm -hmm. in Israel, members of Knesset, ministers, highly ranked uh, Israeli security uh, officials, uh, a member of Congress, uh, and of course, our very own ZOA national president, Morten Klein, uh, and many more. Uh, please watch your email for more details and to sign up in the following days. Uh, this email will really come in the next few days, but for now, save the dates. Uh, Sunday, February 6th, Sunday, February 20th, uh, and Sunday, March 6th in the morning each time. Uh, as you know, ZOA does a lot of good work to defend the Jewish people and the state of Israel. Uh, it is through donations from people like you uh, that we can keep on functioning. I hope you will consider generously supporting the ZOA. Please go to our website at zoa.org uh, in order to donate. Thank you very much for everyone who spoke in this event, and thank you for everyone who attended.